Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another ATP video. So today we'll be talking about Yersinia enterocolitica. Without further delay, let's begin. The genus Yersinia includes multiple species. Our topic today is about Yersinia enterocolitica. Please don't confuse this with Yersinia pestis, which causes the plague. Yersinia enterocolitica, you can tell from the name itself that it affects the GI system. Yersinia enterocolitica is a gram-negative pleomorphic bacillus. It tends to retain stain at the ends, a feature called bipolar staining. It has various virulence factors. 1. It produces urease to protect itself from stomach acid. 2. It utilizes the genes AL and YAD-A, which encode for proteins that makes Yersinia resistant against complement system and phagocytosis. It may produce antigens that cross-react with host antigens, leading to arthritis in adults. Remember that iron-overloaded states, like in the case of hemochromatosis, increase the severity of Yersinia enterocolitis. Lastly, it's also resistant to cold temperatures. Pop quiz time. Can you think of another rod that is also found in milk and is resistant to cold temperature? Listeria. It's a gram-positive rod which is resistant to cold temperatures. It can be isolated from various domesticated animals, with pigs being the most common source. It's often transmitted from contaminated pork meat or puppy feces, but can also be transmitted by contaminated water and milk. Blood transfusions can also serve as a potential source. It causes a zoonotic disease called urocineosis. In some countries, it has taken over Shigella and Salmonella as the most common cause of bacterial gastroenteritis. Yersinia infection is usually transmitted via the fecal-oral route. The pathogen passes into the stomach, traverses the gut wall, and localizes in the lymphoid tissue and mesenteric lymph nodes. One of the key features of Yersinia enterocolitica is that it's shed in the stool for around three months after the symptoms have subsided. Thus, stool culture is the best test to diagnose Yersinia enterocolitica. Yersinia enterocolitica can manifest in two ways. It can present as acute Yersiniosis or mesenteric adenitis. Acute Yersiniosis most commonly presents with acute bloody diarrhea, fever, abdominal pain, and nausea and vomiting. Sepsis can also develop in immunocompromised patients. This happens mostly in children, with toddlers being the most affected demographic. Mesenteric adenitis, which is also known as pseudoappendicitis, is inflammation around the appendix or in the mesenteric lymph nodes. This can mimic appendicitis or Crohn's disease. It usually presents with fever, elevated white blood cell count, right lower quadrant pain, and nausea and vomiting. Therefore, you should keep this in mind if someone presents with this and they mention puppies or other sick kids at toddler's daycare center. Common post-infectious sequelae are reactive arthritis in adults and erythema nodosum. For the treatment, it's mostly supportive and the goal is to keep the patient hydrated. In severe cases, you can use antibiotics such as aminoglycosides or trimethoprim sulfamethyxazole. Alternatively, Fluoroquinolones or cephalosporins can be used to fight this bug. Alright, to summarize, Yersinia enterocolitica is a gram negative pleomorphic bacillus. It's transmitted mostly from contaminated pork or pet feces. It can lead to bloody diarrhea in kids and can cause mesenteric adenitis, otherwise known as pseudoappendicitis. And that's it for Yersinia enterocolitica. We hope you found it beneficial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive our latest explanations. And as always, thanks for watching.